Welcome to this reflection on the Passion of Jesus. The, the four Gospels are separate accounts by different witnesses, written at different times and, as someone of greater social standing recently observed, recollections may vary. It is tempting to take bits from each Gospel and attempt to conflate them into a single story. These readings are exclusively from Mark's account. May I suggest that over the coming week it would be a pleasant task for each of us to read the Passion story from the other three Gospels. That way nothing is missed out. The Passion readings describe the events from Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem through the rapidly developing situation which culminated in his death and burial. It is a story that is familiar. I have taken part in Good Friday and Easter services every year since primary school. Um, that's easily over 70 of them. Nevertheless, in these readings we always find a sure and certain relevance to our present troubles. Reminding us that God is always with us in our pain. Always standing alongside us supporting, comforting and protecting us. This reflection will be available to watch every day over the coming week. Perhaps you may wish to experience it again later in the week when you may have paper and pen to hand to write down thoughts or words that may flow or the names of people who come onto your heart. As we hear the readings, we can be more than passive listeners. We can put ourselves into the story, hearing, seeing, smelling. Will we be spreading palm branches in his path as he enters Jerusalem? Will we later be baying with the crowd or standing by passively as he is accused? Will we deny him when he is arrested? And finally, as we confront his broken, bleeding body on the cross, everyone else will fade away. This is the time for us to face up to what he has endured for each of us individually. This is the time to be true to ourselves so that we can be true to him, our personal Redeemer, who offers us a new life with him, which begins here on earth and endures beyond death into eternity. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
he was in Bethany, reclining at the table of the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of the disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. And while they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to him, the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink it again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives.
You will all fall away, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes tonight, before the cock crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind.
took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. And some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do you need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. And some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fist and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him. Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus. I do not know what you are talking about. The servant girl said to those standing round them, This fellow is one of them. I tell you, I do not know what you are talking about. After a little while, she said again to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore at them. I do not know this man you are talking about. <laughs>
Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up to and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him, but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to get Pilate to release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews, asked Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and of Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So, as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Lord Jesus, we come to you in prayer, remembering your trial, your suffering and crucifixion. We meditate on the great sacrifice, the suffering and pain that you endured for our sake and for the sake of the whole world. In our greatest time of suffering, we realise that we have never suffered as you did. You deserved life, honour and praise. Yet you willingly chose dishonour, ridicule and death in order to complete God's plan. Help us to endure our troubles with a faith that allows no room for fear, 
safe in the sure and certain knowledge that you, our God, walk beside us every step of the way. We pray for God's world, that the dying Jesus on the cross and the living Jesus of resurrection will draw all people to himself, the source of eternal reconciliation and salvation. We pray for the community in which we live, work and worship. That bonds of love within families and between friends will be healed where they are broken and strengthened where they are weak. We pray for all those who are experiencing their own Good Friday darkness, that all who suffer pain of body or mind will be held by the hands of Jesus, the hands which bear the marks of his pain and the promise of restoration and resurrection. Heavenly Father, at the foot of the cross on which Jesus died, we offer you these prayers in hope, trusting in your promise to hear us, trusting in your power which raised Jesus from the dead. Let your grace, mercy, love and peace surround us and all those for whom we pray. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.